Joining us exclusively, Stephen Roach. She's a Yale University senior fellow and former chairman of Morgan Stanley uh, Asia. Stephen, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Will. Let's start on these uh, tensions in Hong Kong. What chances do you put uh, of there being significant military intervention from China, and how significant would that be if it happened? Well, it would be terrible. The, the risks are obviously rising, uh, Wolf. But look, Hong Kong is part of a framework of one country, two systems. So it's not one country, one system. That gives the Hong Kong government the flexibility to uh, act in a way that really diffuses uh, this worrisome buildup of tensions. And so if they can address emphatically the, um, the extradition law issue, if they can address the, um, uh, the, the, the claims that the um, demonstrators have about uh, unnecessary police uh, brutality, I think that would go a long way in diffusing uh, these tensions. But uh, barring those outcomes, um, uh, there's no telling where this will stop. And if it keeps escalating, clearly uh, Beijing is sending some very worrisome signals right now. But if the Hong Kong government was going to do that and going to do that convincingly in the eyes of the protesters, wouldn't it have happened already? Yeah, fair point. Uh, but uh, what, what the, the protests are telling you is that um, the need to do it is becoming more and more urgent. It's very disappointing that the Hong Kong government has not responded to date, but it's not, it is not too late. And uh, I think they need to take this uh, this, this latest escalation of tensions far more seriously than they have now, right now. It seems to me that they're afraid of uh, upsetting Beijing. But again, that flies in the face of this one country, two systems framework. Two systems gives them much more discretion than they appear to be willing to use. And Stephen, I mean, really, that sort of seems to get at the heart of it, especially from an investor standpoint, is that you have China walking this fine line. If you see force... I guess, uh, become more aggressive or become or you see this really deteriorate uh, in terms of the relationship between, um, you know, authorities and protesters. How would this play out here in the U.S.? Because I would imagine even if even if the administration didn't, you know, vocalize about it, you would have lawmakers starting to get much more aggressive here. And that could really sideline trade talks between the two countries. Right. Well, <clears throat> Morgan, trade talks have, are pretty much on ice right now. So. Uh, I don't think you have to worry too much about any further deterioration in that. Uh, the Trump administration did put out sort of a non-involvement statement uh, this afternoon. Uh, but you're right to worry more about the Congress uh, than the White House in, in taking the initiative here. But again, I don't think uh, the, the U.S. Will, will become aggressive uh, in addressing this issue uh, unless there is direct intervention uh, by the Chinese military, and, and hopefully that can be avoided. What do you think about Hong Kong long term, Stephen? Do you think that uh, even if we get past these short term concerns, that companies uh, and workers will be looking to leave the city? Well, well I, I'm uh, personally very um, uh, disturbed by this. I lived in Hong Kong for a number of years. I'm extremely fond of the city. It's a wonderful place, but. <laughs> This is dealing a, a very serious blow to uh, Hong Kong's long-term uh, competitiveness uh, as an international city, as a destination of, of choice for uh, foreign um, financial services firms uh, and uh, expats from around the world. So what, what's really needed here, again, just to uh, hammer uh, home this point that I made earlier, is that the two systems model has to be much more sensitive uh, to the, the pressures that are bearing down uh, on Hong Kong. A failure to do that could really do lasting damage uh, to this great city, and that would be a great tragedy. Stephen, just wanted to switch focus for a final question. We've seen a huge sell-off in the broader markets of late, uh, in particular of the bank stocks, in part because yields have slipped so much. As I glance down, facts at Morgan Stanley, your old uh, shop, is trading at 0 0.9 times book on a 35 uh, percent dividend deal. Do, do you think the selling in bank stocks in general has been overdone of late? Well, again, it's, it's just a reflection of uh, the state of the yield curve and um, uh, the willingness of 
uh, the Federal Reserve to really take what it believes to be a uh, preemptive fashion uh, to uh, uh, lead to a further inversion, which really underscores the profitability risks for uh, financial services firms. So I think, um, uh, you know, hopefully uh, if the Fed draws a line in the sand in its own willingness to invert the curve, um, those pressures will subside.